don't engage alone. We do this together. <laughs> Somebody clip this one. Welcome to Under Two Capes. I am Jared. I'm here with Taladia Plays. What's up, brother? <sighs> what a night. What yeah. a night. And I am here with the old man of Comics League, Nick from the Phoenix Press. What's up, dude? You just love bringing people together, don't you? Yes, 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 I do. I love bringing people together. You, you could say <laughs> that uh, that Gotham has a bad history of uh, freaks and clown suits. So, yeah, so we're talking about eight years of BVS was the, the eight-year anniversary of Batman versus Superman. Dawn of Justice was this week. So Eight we, years. Uh, of course, we had to do uh, an episode about it. Do you feel now, Jared? No, actually, because uh, I, I remember... I'm a child of the 90s. You're a child of the Stone Age. So anyway. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. Excuse <laughs> me. Obviously, this movie means a lot to us as Snyder fans. So oh, no, I'm going to hate it. I'm going to go around first. We'll start with <laughs> Taladia. So Taladia, what does BVS mean to you? Like your f first reactions and the like? Oh, Open up. Let's just say this movie was the first. I would say no. The second DCEU film I went to see at the theaters twice. Mm -hmm. the first time I went, I went in IMAX, and I took my mate to go and see it. We got a picture of us, you know, standing in front of the Batman poster. You know, we both had Superman T-shirts on, and because yeah, I had the Man of Steel T-shirt, he had the normal classic Superman T-shirt, and we were like really enjoyed it, and we were like, yeah, we gotta go again, we gotta go again. So we planned it, and then we, and then I believe in the evening at midnight or something, uh, we went to go see a night two to go watch BVS again, mm -hmm. and it 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 did bring tears to my eye for the first first time round. There was tears mm -hmm. because of Superman's death, the death of Superman. Tears. Well, it brought right? me to tears the moment I see the shot of the Trinity for the first time. But yeah, uh, 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 it's you with you. I thought she was here. You know that's probably Zach referencing the whole Super Wonder versus Wonder Bat, even though we all know where he falls on when he says it doesn't work. Oh so, my god, yeah. Jared, shut up! I had to say that once on this stream. But uh, on my side... So yeah, I saw this in theaters, and immediately I was like, oh my god. Because remember when everyone was up, was upset that like Ben Affleck was cast as Batman, and we were like, oh no... Then he ends up being the best part of the movie, practically. I, I gotta say, there is like a history of like, like a actor being cast as a Batman character. People freak out. Then they actually see the movie. It's like, oh wait, happened with Michael Keaton. Happened with Heath Ledger. It happened with Christian Bale. It happened with Ben Affleck. It even happened with Robert Patterson. And every time people went and saw the movie, like, oh wait, they're actually really good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And uh, see, the thing about Affleck, what I think I think is that that great image, this is the image that that kind of sold me on him being Batman. It's when he first enters the Batcave, the suit is revealed, and then you just see him staring at the suit with that, like, Batman scowl. And I was like, that is Batman. That is Bruce Wayne right there. Also, can you give a shout out to Jeremy Irons, who is surprisingly a great Alfred? I love where he goes, yes, you, you, you're you not going to kill yourself, and not for want of trying. Like, I feel like he's kind of channeling the BTAS Alfred, where, like, you know how the BTAS Alfred was always making those, like, sly, sly digs at him? I, I, I don't know, it just kind of feels like he's channeling that. And a little bit yeah. of Alfred Goth from, from the Keaton, uh, quite, yeah. whatever. I really liked when uh, in my favorite Alfred thing a line is actually in Justice League 
where Batman goes, uh, goes, if I had a, if I had a penny for every time someone said, said that, and then Alfred goes, you'd be even more insufferable. I, I just love that. But, um, so in terms of BVS, because remember my three favorite superheroes were Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. And to see them all together for the first time in when they're playing the kick ass Wonder Woman theme fighting doomsday it was like all put together it was like chef's kiss now granted the wonder woman theme has been like overdone with the dceu but at the time it was freaking it's a dope. good theme but overdone like like even yeah. you can like 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 i love steak but if i have steak three three times a day for three years i'm gonna hate it true now nick your thoughts on like bvs in general uh so my my first viewing of BVS was like years and years ago, and I went straight to the Ultimate Edition on, on Blu-ray. And the correct version. Yes, the only one that actually exists. So, I, and I'm going into this, I, I kept hearing like, oh, it's such a mess. It's such a horrible movie. I watched it like, wait, what are these people smoking? This movie's fine. I like it even. And and then... And then I and then I learned like oh oh you watch the corrected version because I didn't realize it was the ultimate edition I just got you know whatever and and it's just like so I watched it straight from the start everything made sense it was a good movie um, you know I, I make no I make I've I've been very public that like um, because I'm so old I'm a Keaton Reeves fanboy those are my love but like I still love these versions. What you don't know is that Nick is so old that he remembers the cave drawings that Batman carved in when he was sent back in Final Crisis. I mean, who who do you think built a time machine for him? I'm sure you did. So now I want to address the criticisms of BVS. The Martha in the room? Well, uh. here's, how, here's how we're going to do this first. <laughs> so I have a Vox article pulled up that lists like it is issues with BVS and 19 things that don't make sense. So, 19? I don't think it's that now, much. This takes place. This article is written in 2016. We're going to also name which one of these were answered by the ultimate cut. A few of these were. Okay. So for number one, why is Batman so damn gullible? One, two words, Lex Luthor's, uh, actually three words, Lex Luthor's manipulation. Uh, that that, that, that one, was the whole uh, movie. That, I mean, yes, Lex Luthor's smart, but the point is, Batman is supposed to be smarter. Like, well, remember, this is a Batman that, that even Alfred tells him is not being run by like by like a, a logic. He's being driven by rage. Yeah, Fear. but even I don't know rage. Okay, I can see that. Number two, half a point, half a point. Okay, how does the world feel about Superman? So here's the, the description. The film posits a world in which Superman's existence has thrown human life into chaos. Some people worship him. Some think he's a necessary evil. Still, others think he's a huge danger to our species. There's a good version of the story where the deb debate plays out in full, where the moment where the world has no choice but to kill Superman with a nuclear m missile that would not kill Superman. What do you? But to be to be fair, a nuclear missile does weaken him severely. It weakens, but it's not going to kill him. Like he's going to be like. Remember what happened? I think it was in Dark Knight or whatever. He got all gone. Well, it crap. was in this movie. He gets nuked, but 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 then with the sun. But that would the government's going to launch a nuke if Superman's like in Metropolis? Are you stupid? Well, this is Vox, so probably yes. Because of terrible point. <laughs> so Batman vs Superman is not that movie. Metropolis boasts a giant monument to the guy built just 18 months after the events of Man of Steel, but it seems like basically no one likes him. With a monument, that, that's because he saved the world. But again, in those 18 months, he starts doing all these interventions and everyone's like, who, who, who is he really for? That's just human nature. Yeah. That's what I took. Why does everyone blame Superman for the massacre in Africa? That was explained in the ultimate cut. Because in the ultimate cut, they show like Lex's mercenaries and KGB staging it. So it looks like Superman killed them. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the hell was Wonder Woman in Metropolis for? To get the photo from Lex Luthor. 
what does Lex Luthor want? He literally explains it in the movie. He wants to discredit Superman and show that God's not like, God's not good, uh, in other words. If, if God, God is all good, he can't be all powerful. Yeah, the, he literally, this is my re really big problem with, with criticism of BBS, of the Snyderverse. Granted, to be clear, some of it is warranted. Like, we can debate the Martha moment, the tornado moment, and, and, and Nick and I have done that. Like, to be fair, there are some moments where the, the, the acquisition is kind of buried in, like, you have to kind of, like, really pay attention a lot. But a lot of this is, like, did you even watch the movie? Because, like, a lot of the stuff, like, literally, he literally says it. He spells it out. If God is all good, he can't be all powerful. Lex is very clear. Like, this isn't one of a, you have to have a high IQ to watch a movie. No, this no is, he literally says it. That, you that's have to why, watch a movie. That's why, legit, whenever, like, no, that is crit critique in this movie, I'm like, watch the movie. It literally said, in zero uncertain terms. To, 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 to Nick's point, he doesn't beat around the bush. He literally explicitly says it. See, you see this in so, uh, so often. Basically, people just parrot talking points they hear online. They don't even, like, know what they're even talking about. It just makes discussion hard. It's like, is this your opinion or is this someone else's opinion that they yeah. just copy? Here's number six. Is Lois lame magic? I said lame. Uh, so, <laughs> when she's not being held captive as a damsel in distress, Lois Lane used her powers of journalism to immediately arrive on the scene of whatever she's needed to the degree that she can throw herself into a middle of a Batman versus Superman fight. Well, she, she, uh, well, she was she in Washington for a good portion of the movie. And they set it up where after Superman saves her from falling off the building, he tells her, I'm going to go fight Batman. So most likely Lois, because this version of Lois Lane is smart because she was able to figure out who, who Superman is. That's why I have less contempt for this version. Well, I think, but, I think this part of the movie, I think the, 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 the thing that determines whether this is a plot hole or not is when does she get back to Metropolis? Because obviously she is in Washington for a big part of the movie. When does she come back? Because at one point she has to fly back to, uh, to Metropolis. What happens is, if I remember correctly, she she's back in Metropolis at this point. She's in the subway, and then that's when like Lex Luthor, uh, Lex's guys kidnap her. Or what actually what I think happens is. Lex's guys kidnap her in DC and then bring her to to, to Metropolis. The point I'm is, I'm not sure on the timeline of the movies. So I can't comment. Yeah, but so my point is, she arrives at the Batman fight because Superman told her he was going to go fight Batman, and then she literally sees, oh, there's a Batman logo in the sky. Maybe he's going there. I'm I like, mean, to be fair, to be fair, uh, the island, even though it's unabandoned, if there was a fight there, like it would, it would, it would, it would like there's. Like literally skyscraper tall fires going on. Yeah. The next question is why do Clark and Lois Lane lo love each other? Good question, but that, that's besides <laughs> the point. A answer this question for me using only the material found in Man of Steel and PBS. Okay. This is not Zach's fault because we would have gotten a Man of Steel too if he had got been allowed to follow through on his plot. So this is not a Zack Snyder problem. This is a Warner Brothers problem. I really feel like. I, I really feel like you could make a Man of Steel 2, set it in between a Man of Steel and BVS and have it perfectly make sense. Because because like that, I think that is kind of one of the problems of, of BVS is it feels like you're missing an entire movie's worth of exposition mm -hmm. uh, in BVS. Like, they feel like there's an entire movie that happened in between. Yeah, because remember, well, well actually, there's two movies. Because remember, there was supposed to be a Batman movie before BVS. And remember, and remember the Batman movie I keep proposing? Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that a little uh, later. Why does Batman decide not to kill Superman? Okay, so here's the Martha moment. And yeah, okay, we, we can debate this. That's like fine. Yeah. It's it, it's the whole thing. So similarly, why do, doesn't Superman lead with the most pertinent information when confronting Batman? Uh, opening with Lex Luthor's manipulating us into fighting and he's going to murder my mother if we don't work together. I can prove it. It seems like a stronger strategy than saying we need to work together. He doesn't he give him a chance. Yes, uh, I was uh, I was gonna say that thing. So he lands. So Superman shows up. Batman goes, "Well, here I am." And then he goes, "Bruce, you have to listen to me." 
And then uh, uh, he, he, he legit multiple times says, hey, let's talk this through. He even says, stay down. If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. So just let, let's just calm down. Yeah, like literally Superman could have bum rushed him right then and there and either killed him or disabled him right then and there. Mm -hmm. Even more similarly, what is Batman's plan for getting Superman to fight him? Easy, because remember, Superman showed up and said, uh, next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. The bat is dead. Consider this mercy. So Batman figures, hey, if I just shine the bat signal up there and say, no, I'm not fighting, he'll come and fight me. There you go. Yeah. That's it. If Batman knows so much about Lex Luthor's shady smuggling deals, why doesn't he suspect Lex Luthor's true intentions? He knows L L Luthor is keeping an eye on so-called metahumans too, so you'd think he would le he would at least be a little more suspicious. I realize that it's just an extension of my first point, but that's really, really bugged me. Okay, okay. I think I'm kind of coming around to what you're saying here. Let me spell it yeah. out in my terms. What you're saying about Bruce having, he has rage blinders on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's he, he, because repeatedly throughout the movie, even Alfred tells him, "You, you're not thinking clearly, Bruce." I I don't necessarily wholly agree with the point, but it it makes a little bit of sense. So I'll give it. A, I'll, I'll bust it down to a quarter point. That that's why I I'm fine with like this Batman in this move in this one movie killing people. Because remember, even when you look at like Batman after Jason died in a death of the family, he got more brutal and more blinded by like vengeance. He even tried to kill the Joker in the UN. Remember, Superman had to stop him. So there is precedent. I still think Martha seen as a crock well, of crap, but at least this thing, this thing has at least some logic behind it. It became so a it meme. Looked... It became a it meme. Be... Yeah. It, 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 you know, I mean, it's funny. a meme on our channel, so. At my school, uh, they were having a comic book trivia night, which later turned into just obscure Marvel trivia night. But the, when one of the question was, what is Wonder Woman's m m mother's name? Someone screams out, Martha. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine if, if <laughs> like, um, okay, by the way, so when I write, a, 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 when I, when I write, a, I'm going to write a Wonder Woman comic of, like, Aphrodite basically is the water woman of the 1800s and her human name is martha prince oh god that would be so funny jared <laughs> uh, can you imagine like I, I send you that comic and, and you read it and it's like aphrodite's human name is it's martha prince and so, you're like oh my god that son of a biscuit he did it the next point uh, 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 i'm gonna start speeding through through these so we can actually uh, 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 like get to more of a discussion but th this mm -hmm. next one is why is everything in this movie at least two story beats too complicated? Lois being a damsel in distress made me roll my eyes, but at least Superman dropping everything to rescue her makes sense that they love each other, as they say. But then it turns out Luther is using Lois Lane to danger. So you're telling me the movie's too complicated for you to understand? Wow. No, but that, that's the that, lowest that, lane that bit. more like a you problem than a me problem. The, the lowest lane bit really gets on my nerves. Well, because he's lowest lane. Here's the next one. This one's explained in, in the Ultimate Edition. Why doesn't Superman hear the bomb in the wheelchair? That it's it's in the ultimate edition. I still can't believe they cut that out, by the way. That that is the stupidest thing. It's a simple thing. It's made of lead. Of course you couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but I said, someone asked, does anyone in this universe know how to use a spear? Spears are made to be thrown. Not necessarily. Did you see that, 300, sir? That that part I do I I will I will grant them because like having Superman be the one to have to do it, that's just plot contrivance, because, like, there is ways that you could easily write around to where Wonder Woman chucks a spear. Like, let's say Superman grabs a rope temporarily, and is, is subduing him, while Wonder Woman bum, bum rushes him with a spear. Like, there, there are... I'm sorry, there, there, there are a lot of ways he could have written around that. So My, I, I, I'm going to give... Counterpoint... I'm gonna give what if they threw it and Doomsday just swatted it away? No, I said Water Woman bum rushes him. That could work. Water Woman is fast enough to get there and and, and pin the spear into him. Like Water Woman. But yeah, done. they had to kill Superman the movie, so I I understand that. So we're gonna go kind of uh we're gonna X out of that. So again, 
<laughs> there, are, there are some valid criticisms, some really stupid ones of people clearly not watching. The ninety movie percent of these like, are stupid. I, I, not ninety percent of these are really, really freaking dumb from people that are supposedly film critics. Now, he, speaking of critics, Nick has a little rant. So, Nick. Oh my God! Here why we don't go. you? Why don't you like entertain us? Go ahead, sir. All right. So. Love or hate BVS, I I don't I don't freaking care. I I like the movie, but the thing that 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 really grinded my gears is after the movie for like six months afterwards, you would have YouTube video after YouTube video like let's rewrite Batman versus Superman. Like everyone thought they could rewrite the movie, and you actually read the rewrites. They're so freaking stupid. It's like it's like you 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 thought this movie was bad, so you make something even worse. And yet you call yourself a film <laughs> critic. Like, this is, like, those who can't, those who do, do. Those who can't teach. And those who can't teach, critique! <laughs> I love that, dude. Nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, so, like, the, 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 the I added a third layer to, to that whole thing. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. A lot of them, when they rewrite it, they turn it into, like, a Marvel movie where everyone's joking and just, and I'm like. Or, or like, the dialogue is so bland and blah yeah exactly I, i'm like I, i'm pretty sh i'm pretty sure that uh, you think you can write you think some rando youtuber can write better than professional screenwriters like i'm sorry if you could actually write as well to be a professional screenwriter you wouldn't be a freaking YouTuber. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. You, you'd be a professional screenwriter. That's my point. I'm like, or, or you know what it is? It's just comic book fans w wanting to enact their head cannon into what this movie, uh, uh, into what they want the movie is. And the, and that's that was another source of criticism that BVS got. A lot of people is like, it's not what I wanted for BVS. And I'm like, okay, but... So it's not what you wanted as a BBS movie. So that immediately says the whole movie is irredeemable. I I don't I don't understand that. But m moving on, the other thing, the other point where I think this movie gets a little bit of um, heat on that we, we, that we can debate on this is that people say it's too dark. It is dark. It's it. Well, let me put it this way: it's definitely more dark than Man of Steel. And this darker. one, they kind of have a point because, like, this. I, and I'm not saying. I'm not However, saying it's. Sorry, go ahead, Jared. My my point is, is like they treat it like it's dark from beginning to end, but at the but at the end of the movie, there's hope with Batman saying, with this Batman, who by the way has had rage blinders on the entire movie, all of a sudden he he like basically sees like this alien give his life for humanity. Now, whether or not, uh, ignoring the criticism about cramming it in, in the death, I'm just going off of what's in the movie. He says, no, men are still good. We fight, we die, but, but we can do better. We have to. So you see this hopeful arc for Batman in the movie. See, here's my other criticism. Mm -hmm. Those same people mm -hmm. who, uh, who, who, who criticize BVS for being too dark, cheered for the batman which and i'm gonna call ah, it right now yeah the batman is objectively darker than bvs yes it is oh good lord yes like it is at least still, three still a or good four movie. magnitudes of order darker than bvs like i'm like i'm sorry but like bvs is comic book dark um like it's dark yeah. it's like dark for a comic book kind of thing uh the batman is dark for a movie, like even by movie standards, like like people getting murdered and like we're preparing the body, their serials, like people in jigsaw like puzzles. I'm like, yeah, exactly. It is objectively the dark movie, and people and Nick. That's my other point. People, and will, I like both movies, by the way. I'm not. Oh yeah, both Batman. movies are great, but people will critique Zach for doing stuff, and then when other cr directors do that exact same thing in their movies, they cheer it and like, "This is awesome! This is so revolutionary!" And I'm like, "At least be consistent, guys." Like, I, I'd actually say BVS is similar in tone to the Nolan movies. Yeah, like, like I wouldn't say like they're like similar, like in the same wheelhouse in terms of like who was a producer. 
Well, uh, Christopher Nolan was wasn't involved with BVS, but still. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would not call Man of Steel a dark movie. Man of Steel is not; it's gritty, mm -hmm. but it's not dark. BVS is dark. Yeah, it's dark. Don't get Superman, me wrong. When but you have people... Superman say, "No one stays good." Like I had to fight him. No one stays good in this world. Where like you have Superman lose all hope. Yeah, you're, you're doing a dark movie. It, it, it's to... a dark movie, but, but, but my point is, is like they, people treat it like he's like he says, "No one stays good in this world," and then just leaves it at that and doesn't. Get, <laughs> they leave out the end part where everyone is like, "No, you know what? Men are still good." Yeah, that it's line. Like... Mm -hmm. That line is just great. Like, yeah, it is. Oh, it's a great line. Go ahead, Nick. No, I think Taladi wanted to say something. Oh yeah, uh, go, uh, go ahead, Taladi. I just think what with this movie, Zach knew what he was building up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. And the dialogue is so well written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the the camera shots, mm -hmm. like, come on, the camera shots at the beginning of the film, by the way. The death of Martha and Thomas Wayne, the gun, the clicking of the gun. It, it's really well done. Now, yeah. my critique of BVS, I Go think on. the scene of the of the advertisements for the Justice League on the little computer that should have been a post credit scene. I think that would have yeah. as as shoe shoehorned in as that was, it would have fit more as a post credit scene. Now, the other thing. I've said this on my show many times, the marketing, because can you imagine the theater reaction if we didn't know Wonder Woman was in this movie? It, it, because if you notice, in this movie, they play Diana off like she's actually Selena Kyle, like she's covertly going into like the the uh, the library um, gala and uh, taking Bruce Wayne's drive. They have that flirting scene in the gala, which is just a flirting scene. And then... <laughs> And then, uh, can you imagine? We're in the theater. We think she's playing Selena oh. Kyle. Can you imagine? <laughs> we're in the theater. We think she's playing Selena Kyle. Then that scene when she's walking off the plane, they go, Miss Prince. We're all like, wait, what? And then she comes down yeah. and just stay and just uh, is badass. Yeah. What were you saying, Nick? No, I was teasing. I thought I was gonna. I was gonna sing the song of my people. Oh yeah. So. Now let's talk about like uh, the different like uh, the newer um, the, the actors who got their start in this because again so with with Ben Affleck is Batman so the thing is I, I think he was the closest to to looking like comic book Batman like even mm. it's, 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 he, here's the funny thing about Ben Affleck he had the he had the Batman chin like when he's in the in the if you're talking about if you're talking about Dark Knight Returns era Batman, hang on. Then yes, hang, no, 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 hang on. I have a counterpoint to that. Allow me to uh, to elaborate. Hang on, Batman, Batman, Jason, Christian Bale, Christian Bale, like Bale was too life. was too uh, thin. Here is Batman, uh... not Dark Knight Returns Batman, drawn by Jason Fabok. It, but there's a lot of times where Batman is more is more Christian Bale size in the comics. Yeah, but look at that. Like I, I'll definitely say Ben Affleck is very close to a certain version of Batman, but all, the other Batman actors have gotten pretty good too. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and again, it depends on the artist. But it's like when you have someone that looks like Bat, uh, 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 that's believable as Batman, and for one thing, is bulky as Bat. Like he, he actually looked jacked as Batman, and he nailed the Dark Knight Returns era Batman. Yeah, and, like, and that, that was... like the frame, like his like the whole frame and the costume for the Dark Knight Returns era esque Batman. I think he nailed it to a T. Can we talk about how awesome that bat suit is? How you can see like all the threads. It looks like worn. So it's like, yeah, this is an older Batman. And I, I just love the reveal of the Batmobile where it's like all dark. And then all of a sudden the headlights come on and just rams through some terrorists. And the thing mm -hmm. about that is that what we learned during the full circle event is that the, uh, the, the, the guy who, who designed the Batmobile, he did that like at a Starbucks drawing on a napkin. <laughs> and I'm like, of, of course, someone involved with Zack Snyder would do it that so, way. So, so Jared, 
Mm-hmm. Um, when you buy your own replica BVS Batmobile, no, it's gonna be one tell- from Justice League. When you buy your own Justice League Batmobile, it's the first place you're gonna hit up be McDonald's. <laughs> no, you know it'll be it'll be Dunkin' Donuts because Ben Affleck is apparently sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts now. Like I, like wow. I, I told you. When I get my when I get my '89 Batmobile, I'm going to McDonald's so I can do the I'll get drive through. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. And you need to 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 tweet about that. But um, so l- 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 I don't need to tweet you. about it. Everyone else will. Now here here's the other uh, casting that kind of surprised people is that with Gal Gadot was cast as Wonder Woman because here's the thing. The first thing people said was that she's too thin to play Wonder Woman. To which Brit and I say. It depends on the again. A lot of this is it depends on the on who's drawing the character because Wonder Woman has been drawn very buff. To and be she's been fair, drawn very lean. Mm-hmm. To be fair, um, Gal Gadot. The only pictures we had of her before then was her as a model. Gal Gadot put in the work and bulked up. She yeah. bulked up and actually put on some muscle. You know, like like exactly. She actually she looked like she had some muscle on her. You know, she looked like she would be an Amazonian warrior. Like, obviously, she has superpowers that kind of help fill the gap, but she had enough muscle on her to say, like, okay, this is a woman who, you know, she, this woman less. You know, uh, so uh, Gal, Gal-, Gal- Gadot's credit. She would have, did put in the work. I did like, by the way, the, the other criticism that someone has is that her breasts are too small to play Wonder Woman, to uh, which Gal Gadot what? had. Gal had the greatest response. Hers is, okay, so if we're going for accurate to Amazons, you do realize they chopped off a breast to make themselves better archers, right? <laughs> do you want me to go that accurate? I, I think we're fine. I, I mean, I'm sure some people wouldn't mind, but you know. Yeah, but, but anyway, so, so by the way, for to prepare for the role, so she practiced a lot of fighting, obviously, but she also read practically every classic Wonder Woman comic. <laughs> and it shows. She put it, it. It shows. And here's the thing: the great. Uh, and we're gonna go around to Taladia. What was the moment that sold Gal as Wonder Woman for you? I know what Nick is, and you all know what mine is. But we'll reiterate <laughs> on this show. Uh, mine is what sold her as Wonder Woman. Um. Um, is the part where she says. I bet you've never heard a woman like me before. That's mine. That's mine. You don't know me, but I've known a few women like you. Oh, I don't think you've ever known a woman like me. I'm like, okay, that is freaking dope. I love that. It's because she got the, because here's the thing about Diana. Yes, Diana is like the, this great warrior piece, but she also has attitude at times. So it's like, uh, he, it, a gal was like the first actress that really got that attitude thing. So Nick, why don't you tell the people what sold Gal as Wonder Woman for you? Because it's it's a great moment. All right. So it's during the Doomsday fight when she's fighting Doomsday, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's like this really quick shot where she gets knocked back into a pile of rocks, and she looks at the monster, and she smiles. She yeah. smiles. It's like she's enjoying the fight. I was like, all right, yep, that's Wonder Woman. That's Wonder Woman. And by the way, improv, that was all gal because she's like, yeah, I, I figured she'd be more feisty in a fight. And I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, that just makes me, that just like, honestly, the fact that it's improv makes me like her even more because, like, it, it show, tells me that gal intuitively understands the character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, it's like you, you get what the. Because Wonder Woman has had moments where, like, she she is like having a great time in the fight. Because remember, she's a warrior, and I, I just, I, yeah, I dug that when she gets knocked back and she just smiles. It it it, it just was like so. It, this whole movie is so cool with the character beats that they give the characters. I also love where uh, S- Superman lands. He goes. Did you find the spear? I've been a little busy. It's like they have that banter, even though they just kind of, uh, they kind of just met. Yeah. And they were trying to kill each other. I also love, so I I like the moment where, and people also critiqued why is Batman killing the warehouse fight if he's supposedly reformed. My counterpoint to that 
is that so if you look at Batman, he says, I'm going to make you a promise, Clark. Martha won't die tonight. Now, this is after the Martha scene. So everything's all, so we're ignoring that, that criticism. The, what I think he says Martha here is because he's like, I failed to, I couldn't protect my parents. I'm going to, I'm not going to, he sees this kind of as a cathartic way to save his parents. Cause, and they even played with this in the Nolan movies where after the, the family's killed, Bruce basically says it was my fault, Alfred, I got them killed. So I always took that as like him going, I have a chance to like make up for that. So now let's talk about another one of the more controversial parts. Wait, wait, the... wait, 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 wait. Yeah, go ahead. There's another moment yeah, that yeah, I, I really want to highlight. Go ahead. Uh, another one of my favorites is is when he rescues uh, Martha. Yeah. And he says, It's okay. I'm a friend of your sons. I figured. The cape. I just love it because, like, Diane Lane delivers that line with such great acting. It's like, such a, like, it's kind of like, like, oh, I'm rescued. It's like one of those, like, post-rescue, like, I'm still stressed as Frank, but I'm happy. And, like, and just, like, one of those, like, icebreaker lines. It's just it's such great acting. I love it. Yeah. And then, well, first off, we also have that terrific recreation of Dark Knight Returns where the, uh, <laughs> I'll kill her. Believe me, I'll do it. I believe you. And he just shoots. Now. Zach got some criticism because uh, I know Zach got criticism because um, Zach believes that that Batman killed that that person in the comic, and that there have been some, some people have said no he didn't, and there have been some people that said no he did. I'm going to argue he did because there's a very specific moment in the book. I'm actually pulling it up, and we're going to examine the panel together because there's if you pay attention to the way the art's drawn. Let me put it this way: If it's not supposed, if if it's supposed to show he didn't kill him, they did a not that effective of a job doing it. So I'm just pulling up that scene. Okay, here we go. So let me show you this. So Batman shoots the person. the 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 mutant has the has the kid, and it's like, believe me, I'll do it. I'll kill him. And the Batman goes, I believe you. Now, if you look at this top panel right here, so Nick, would you say? that body is falling over yeah and there's a bullet hole where the head would kind of be yeah and there's a blood splatter so i think the i think the mutant got killed yeah pretty much yeah and then a, a friend of mine who who said no they don't it, 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 who critiqued that was like well wh why didn't lindell put out an, an apb on batman because you're not gonna be able to get an apb on batman but anyway so ignoring that i i just wanted to bring that up but uh, that's the other thing i loved about bvs this was the first time I noticed that if you look at the way Zach films stuff, he is literally recreating comic panels or like stuff that would be in a comic book. Like when Superman's recovering in the sun, everything's like regenerating. Then his eyes open and he's got the, like the red eyes. And I'm like, that is legit a comic panel. He recreates the Dark Knight. Uh, he recreates scenes and dialogue from Dark Knight Returns effortlessly. And I know because he's doing Dark Knight Returns. But but still, I appreciated that devotion to accuracy. Mm -hmm. And he obviously, uh, like with Gal and Henry and Ben, he cast people who were big fans of the characters. Like, do you know what Ben Affleck did with his check from Goodwill Hunting? What did he do? He made a real Batcave. Oh my God. Like, I would do the same thing. So, yeah, I would too. I would so too. I, I think it even has a secret entrance. So, I'm like, yeah, he, he cast people that obviously were fans of the characters. And you know what? Yeah. It shows. But you can tell to net, Nick's point with Gal, you can tell when you're watching a movie and the characters and, and the actors don't seem like they get the characters. All three of these got the characters. Would you guys say that? I'll start with Taladia. Sorry? Would you say that, that uh, like all three of the actors understood the, the characters well? Oh, yeah. Hands down there. Henry knew the characters of Superman. Ben knew about Batman. And Gal knew about Wonder Woman easily. Easily they, they did define the characters of what they are. And they brought the character, the Trinity, to life. Yeah. How about you, Nick? 
Uh, well, definitely, and it shows in like you know how they acted and how they portrayed the characters. In my- it, it's it's very obvious. Which and it even goes back back. I, I, I'm going to bring up X Men '97 real quick for another reason. That's why I keep bringing up the show. Whenever you get fans involved in the creative process, look what happens. Like with like with '97, the Snyder verse. You get characters that, because what Zach and the crew were able to do is they took these characters, and I know updating for a modern audience is like a, a a dirty word on the internet, but they did it in a way where they still took the heart of the character. Like, this is how Batman would react in this situation. This is how Superman would react. This is how our society would react. So uh, th- that's this is where I think updating characters for the modern audience works. It's it's, it's like I, I guess essentially what, what DC did with the new Fifty Two, and that's for you, Taladia and Brit, if you're watching. But um, so let me ask you guys this before we we end: your top five favorite moments from BBS. Like when you think of BBS, you think of these five moments. I'll I'll give you guys a chance to to think them out, but I'll give mine. Number one, when Wonder Woman first shows up and she goes, dan, 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 because watching the movie, I was always wondering what the Wonder Woman theme going to be like, because that's important to get a theme that really embodies the character. And they did. My second one is the warehouse fight from BVS, because you really just can't beat because that that is literally Arkham Batman f- uh, fighting. And I was like, yes, that was so cool. My third one is the is honestly the Batman versus Superman fight because I like seeing Clark hold back because yeah, again, Clark could easily like lay out Batman, but up until the point where Clark is about to die, he will not kill Batman. He's like, no, 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 no. I have to talk this through because that's again what Superman would do. He he would use, uh, arguably, he would use lethal force as an absolute last resort. Then we get to, okay, so that's three. My my uh, other favorite is is the Justice League tease, even though it should should have gone at the end because I, I liked the, seeing like all all of the um all of the characters teased, and then five is the BBS is the nightmare tease, even though it didn't make sense at the time to put it in there. I think it, it it's cool in that it it actually does kind of work thematically with the movie because. You could argue it was Bruce having a nightmare of Superman taking over because remember the whole movie, he's concerned that, that Superman's going to be corrupted. Like when he says, um, how many men stay, stay good, Alfred? Uh, I, I mean, how many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? And you could say that that the nightmare was like Batman going, this is what happens if I fail. And then you get the, the flash scene, which by the way, wasn't in the dream. It was actually there. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. So, you know, it's Ladia. I'll start with you. Top five favorite BBS moments. Well, number five um, it has to be um, Lex Luthor, the introduction of Lex Luthor. Yeah, I love that. The... His theme is so good. Yeah. Number four for me is Alfred, you know, telling Bruce, you know, about um, about about the whole Metropolis fight. Yeah, I like that one. Number three is um, Bruce Wayne meet Clark Kent for the first time. At the Didn't they ballroom. lampoon that on the on the Kimmel show? Yes, they did. I oh, oh, oh! I, I, I love how they included. Uh, they actually brought in Will Arnett as Lego yeah. Batman. And then Affleck and Kimmel both go. No one cares about Lego Batman. Yeah, Lego and then Batman. Will Arnett goes, "Ask your kids if they care." And and then and then the, the irony is well or not got the last laugh because Lego Batman of all those movies was the one that did the best. Yeah, exactly. So to it's tell Adia, I, I believe you're on number five, I think. Number two. Number okay, two go ahead. Then, number two and then number one. Yeah. Uh, number two okay. is is for me is the the forming of the Trinity. <laughs> My man, there you go. There you go, dude. And and the number one. Is Ben Affleck saying men are still good? Mm-hmm. I love that. You line. know, we fight, it... we kill, we betray one another, but we can rebuild. We have to, and it's basically like the, the summation of Batman's journey. So, Nick, impress me. 
Oh, sorry, this isn't Justice League. Like, so I thought you were setting me up for the uh, other line. But no, no yeah. this is my five in no particular order. No particular uh, the order. The first one is like the first time you see Batman is is from the cop's perspective. And he's like, yeah. you're in the flash right now and you see Batman. It's like, it's actually kind of frightening to a degree. Yeah, um, exactly. The second one is honestly any scene with Mercy Graves. Because mm-hmm. Mercy Graves, like, I, I love that a character from Batman the Animated Series is now in BBS. And the Neither actress who the actress who plays her does it with such like a such great confidence. It's one of those things where it's like I wish we could have saw more from the character. I was like kind of mad what happened to her. If if they continued but, it, uh, they could have brought her back as a cyborg. That's one way. Um, but the uh, other th- the so the next one is like you said the first meeting of of uh, of Bruce and and Clark. It's just such a classic, like, sne- like they both know who each other are to a degree, but they're not going to say it, and they're just kind of sniping back and forth. And But, like, uh, but my favorite part is, is uh, I love bringing people together, then he, like, thumps uh, Clark Kent, Kent's like, you should not pick a fight with this man. It's like, it's just so on the nose, but I, I love oh, it. He shakes Clark's hand and goes, you got some, uh, uh, some grip. Do not pick a fight with this guy. It's so on the nose. I'm sorry. I, I, it's so I good. It. I love it. Honestly, um, I actually like the other thing we haven't touched upon is Jesse Eisenberg. He got a lot of flack for his betrayal. I actually think he was great. I think he mm-hmm. was great. Like he really made people uncomfortable. Um, That's the point. It, yeah, the whole, like the whole Granny's Peach Tea moment was just like that utterly terrifying kind of like sudden realization before things go, and it's just like. Oh my god. The, the, like one of the things I think this movie doesn't really get the credit for is the editing is really great at building tension. Yes, it is. Be- because in, in that scene with the grain speech, she there's no music or anything. It's just quiet and then bomb goes off. Yeah, and I love it when like the bomb goes off. Obviously Superman's not affected, but just the look on his face. It's like he's so like such a dichotomy of like he's fit like he's physically unharmed, but emotionally he is you know it's like it, it's it, it kind of shows that lex 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 isn't fighting on a physical level he's playing a mental game and he's winning mm-hmm. but oh, by the way that scene also got got flack because it was like we never see superman save anyone in the ultimate edition they have him flying people out of the capital but yeah. beyond that yeah i don't is know that it? um uh i guess i gotta give a shout out to one of our lines like if if, uh, if god won't kill man then the devil will do it. Like, yeah, I love Jesse that. Eisenberg delivers it with such conviction. Yeah, actually, I got two more, two two honorable m- 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 mention. Want to mention in that scene when uh, he calls up, he goes, uh, "It's so um, when KG Beast calls Lex and, Le- and Lex answers the phone. He goes, hello, break the bad news.' And then Batman goes, "I'd rather do the breaking in person." And you can see little uh, Lex that realization. He's like, "Oh no!" And then. My my other favorite in the it's when it's when Lex uh, goes in, into into Lex Corp. It's after Batman steals the kryptonite, but it, it, you're seeing the aftermath of the assault. Lex is watching the security camera, and you see a guard just standing there. And all of a sudden, Batman just drops down and grabs him, and brings him back up. It's it's Arkham Batman. Affleck was essentially Arkham Batman in this movie. Oh oh, another great moment. Yeah, is- go ahead. Is when Batman's in the Batmobile, and all of a sudden you see Superman in the headlights. He just comes out of nowhere, and yeah. the Batmobile just bounces off of like a pinball. I know. love her. I love her. No, no, no. I, I need to finish. Yeah, I need to finish this. And so the Batmobile's absolutely trashed, and Superman just comes down, rips off the hood, and then Batman just calmly stands up. He's like, "Stop!" It just, it just the balls on that guy. He just like, oh my god, like, ah. Oh. Well, well, the other I'm, thing on that is that I love where so Batman intentionally tried to ram Superman. I'm like, did you really think that was gonna work? <laughs> it's like, like wait, it's, to Nick's point, it was kind of cartoony. He just bounces right off. Yeah, but I, I think it, in a I good way. It, it, it well, to, to, to be fair, th- this this movie does kind of play out like 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 a, like it plays out like like the Arkham games because the Arkham games have like are are themselves an R rated version of Batman the Animated Series. This does Particularly play out Arkham like Knight. And, and Darkham Asylum too. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
Um, and this to that's to me like Batman the Animated Series plays out like a more mature version of Batman the Animated Series to a degree. Like it, it yes. has it has a bit of a cartoony vibe, but not but that's not to its detriment. But I feel like it bouncing off. Yes, it's cartoony. But it also helps demonstrate the power of Superman. Well, the fact yeah, that, exactly. Like, it bounces I, off, and Superman's not even phased. Well, it here's shows the thing: just how much power he has. They they basically followed that up in the Snyder cut with the whole axe in the shoulder, not impressed because like he just stands there and just takes it and is completely on to your point unfazed as the Batmobile so, just so bounces off. So I guess off you him. could say, at in this moment in BVS, man was not impressed. Yeah, he was this. Not impressed. Yeah, there you go. That's still my favorite DC moment in film ever. But mm-hmm. so, all in all, uh, uh, my final question for you, gentlemen: mm-hmm. How do you rate this movie out of ten? And we're only talking about the ultimate cut. We're not going to talk about the extended, the the theatrical cut. And where do you guys rank this among the DC movies that Snyder did? So I'll start with Taladia. Where would I rank this film? In, in, in the ranking of Man of Steel, BVS, and Zack Snyder's J- Justice League. Is Watchmen He's, in this ranking as well? No, it, it, it's the DC... It's the DC. it's the Justice League movies he did. Okay. I would, I'll put this at number one. Number one? Okay, interesting. Yeah, and the reason behind that is basically because the, the forming formation of the Trinity. Mm. Uh, I I can see that. I can see that. And uh, how how do you rate BBS out of ten? That's an easy ten out of ten. Like, come mm-hmm. on, it's it's not it's not it's not even a question. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was the first. Have. I mean, this was the first ever film that had the first ever comic book character ever created and the second comic book ever a character ever created on live action ever. It's never going to be done. Ever again, like this, where Batman fights Superman. I love how how I think another reason why people hate Zack Snyder, well, comic fans hate Zack Snyder, is that he got to be the first director to assemble the Justice League. Suck it! But anyway, so Nick, yes, yeah, yeah, so same two questions to you. So we're so we're so by we're doing the trilogy, right? The tri- the unfinished pentilogy. Yes. Uh. Wait, what? What? What four movies? Well, I I have to say the uh, uh, unfinished pentilogy because Justice League's part two and three. Okay, so Man of Steel's number one because I feel okay. like it's of of them all, it's like the like it's just I don't know. I just think I think it's the one that works the best. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Snyder Cut is number three. This one, BVS is number two. Okay. Um. I like the Snyder Cut, but it drags on on way too long. And while it's good, this thing it just I don't know, it just it it, it works. Like BVS mm-hmm. works. Man of Steel just hits a lot of the right notes for me. You think you could mess with my mother? Yes, I love that scene. Uh, so yeah, good. that 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 scene. And, and how but, do you rate BVS out of ten? Again, only old Ultimate Edition. Uh, probably a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, like I said, I do, there are some stuff I, I disagree with. It's not a perfect movie, but to be fair, also, uh, Man of Steel is also 9.5 out of 10, though for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. Snyder Cut is probably a 9. Okay. So for me, in, in terms of where I rank this in the other two, uh, two uh, Snyder Justice League movies, it's ZSJL, BVS, and Man of Steel. Because ZSJL, because I'm a Justice League head, it's all, uh, they, they're my favorite comic book team. To see them t- uh, together and given the respect they deserve, um, I love that. Plus, uh, plus, I got to see my favorite, vi- my two favorite comic book villains showed up as well, Deathstroke and Darkseid. So I'm like, I, you, you can't beat that. BVS? <laughs> Because of the Trinity and again to see the Trinity interact and fight, and Man of Steel is third. And to be clear, that doesn't mean I don't like Man of Steel. I'm just saying of the three, here's the order of liking. I still like all three. And in terms of a numerical rank, I give ZSJL a ten out of ten for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. BVS, I would give a solid all three a ten out of ten because here's why. <laughs> While they are flawed, 
I still they hit the right beats for me in terms of what I want to see in a modern Superman uh, trilogy, particularly as a fan of the new Fifty Two, because that that's the thing about Zach's portrayal of Superman. It was you post-crisis. mean this bad boy? Yes, good. It Zach managed to m- merge together. <laughs> Here's the thing: Zach merged post Crisis and new. 52 Superman together better than Tomasi did. <laughs> hey, hey. By by the way, I, I'm gonna say, say this on stream, so so it's always on like on, on credit. So N- Nick, so we were playing Suicide Squad, and Dave sh- showed up in the chat, and he said something very interesting. They was watching Chuck D- D- uh, D- Dixon's live stream, and on stream, Chuck said that Wonder Bat doesn't work, and Wonder Woman works better with Superman. No! And I'm like, there's Betrayal. a reason why I love Chuck Dixon, baby. <laughs> there you go. So you know what? Hell yeah. On that note, everyone, where do you rank BVS of the three movies? How do you numerically rate? What are your favorite BVS moments? Drop in the comments all your favorite BVS stuff and l- let us know. <laughs> let us know a- a- any trivia that uh, th- that we missed and l- let us know why why Nick is wrong for not ranking Zack Snyder just like a 10 out of 10. And I, I, I guess it has something to do with age. But anyway, stay heroic, everyone. Lois Lane is Lois, Lois Lane. Lane and belongs with General Zod. Fella.